Shepherd's Town. An eagle in a thermal is a circle now, like a tire on a bike rolling down Columbus Street. But Katie got a little look if, if, if there's a discipline that, from a management perspective, we have to we have been following with a lot of respect and a lot of care, this is information systems, for a number of reasons. First, for the educational implications that are involved in anything that you are discussing and related. Well, the second thing is that if, if there's a discipline that is changing the way organizations are behaving, this is it. And the last, from my point of view again, from management perspective, is the interaction between human people and machines, or software, depends. This is going to change the landscape of how we've understood ourselves as human beings. When we think about what are the pillars of research, we think about you know, empiricism. Well, CERN certainly has that. Right? They're masters of empiricism. But it's also theory-driven research. They have lots and lots of theory. Then you hear people talking about the third pillar of science being computation. And Bob Jones is going to tell us all about that today on a very operational level. So that's really exciting. But I think there are other qualities of research that are important to emphasize. And those of us who are involved in research management, for me, I think research should be romantic. I mean, I, I think in a world where we have more bibliometrics, more impact factors, more ways of, of doing accounting exercises, it's important that research entities protect the degree of sort of naive romanticism that, 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 that surrounds research. And I think CERN certainly embodies that for me. It has a certain level of optimism and, and, and mysticism and romanticism we probably haven't seen since, you know, World War II physics. Take time, do what you're gonna do and just smile, you're gonna see it through and your wings are gonna... The moment spell. is all about the data acquisition. So that's all what happens at the experiment site, pulling that data out. In parallel, of course, we have to compare it, we have simulation, we use Monte Carlo simulations to understand and predict what we would expect to see in those experiments as well. And then we have the analysis part as well. That's what all the physicists are interested in. We're changing our architecture now. It's becoming less of a hierarchy and more of a flat network connectivity point of view. Let's say there's a collaborative model, the grid model, but can we make use of some of the, the technologies that are coming up for virtualization? And can we share it somehow between a private infrastructure and a public infrastructure? We have separate infrastructures for networking, separate infrastructures for grid, and separate infrastructure for supercomputing. From a user point of view, they don't give a damn how you separate it, right? They want to see the whole thing working together. They want to be able to have workflows that go across supercomputer centers sitting in Munich against a commodity systems sitting in Paris with data structures that are being built up in Helsinki. We'll show you that services are becoming a vastly larger part of economic activity. We don't have a language. We don't have a systematic way of thinking about services, and yet you are getting more than half of your business from these things called services. But in the 2006 paper that Jonathan referenced, uh, Jim Spohr and I essentially put this out to the world and said, yeah, we think, we, we think we, this is needed. And it isn't about one company. One company can't do this. It has to be an effort of a community of organizations, individuals, research funding sources, and the like is the customer is a much more active uh, part of a service process, in part because services, among other things, are intangible. And openness now is about gaining economies of specialization, from economies of scope, economies of scale, and economies of skill. And then the other sort of business idea that we can wrap on top of this, uh, a way to make this truly sustainable as an escape from the commodity trap is for organizations to think of what they are offering to the world as a platform. Our mission is to just solve problems um, and capture opportunities, right? So you get the solving part and the capturing fun things and opportunities part. Well, why would we try and chase down contracts all over the world? Um, we want to help people be as efficient as possible. You can start to get some really interesting insights. So this is an app called Park It DC. You put in an address, and based on where you're going, maybe I have to go to a meeting. Those black parking meters, unfortunately, are broken ones. And then you see the P for parking garage, M for the metro. Red means you, you actually have to pay for a meter right now. So when you're going to try and make a better decision about, should I drive to this meeting, or should I take the metro, or should I take the bus, or how should I get there? 
this became an application that was useful for people. What was interesting to learn was the kind of data that the developer was collecting to plot these broken parking meters, because it's a, it's a real-time thing. Um, he noticed that it was taking six days, on average, to fix a broken parking meter. Uh, and so when we showed the CTO of the city this, he said, it's interesting, because the contract with the vendor requires that they fix the meters within 24 hours. So a citizen built an application during a contest because they're passionate about parking, apparently, and helping citizens get around the city. But what they uncovered was that the vendor wasn't actually adhering to their contract. That's not a citizen's job, right? But there are all sorts of interesting externalities that happen. So our winner of the Best Paper Award Virtual worlds and people with lifelong disability exploring the relationship with virtual selves and others. Karen Stendhal, Judith Mokel Danielson, Bjorn Eric Monk Bold, and Susan Ballenden. So, congratulations. My sincere thanks to our local organizing crew here. You've done an outstanding job, and you make the rest of us look better than we deserve. Thank you very much.